Hello everyone, it's Rebecca with a mixed media project for you. Thanks for joining me. Our friends recently bought a house and so I wanted to create a housewarming gift for them. So that's what this project is. Don't worry, I'm gonna use a lot of different products today, but I will link all of them right over on my blog, which I'll link to on my YouTube video. So you don't need to go and write anything down. I've done all of it for you. So I've started out with some Winsor & Newton white gesso and just spread it with a credit card and a brush that I keep for glues and gessos and things like that. And then I used a range of different papers, some printed free graphics that I got from a graphics fairy website. I used some paper from Melody Ross and Seven Gypsies, plus some basic craft paper, the sort that you would wrap your parcels in. I also used some Tim Holtz Ideology District Market tissue wrap. This is great because it's transparent, so it really adds a nice touch to adding layers to what you're doing, some dimension. I've used Mod Podge to adhere everything with, it's the matte Mod Podge. And I'm just tearing up my paper as I go along and creating more square and rectangle pieces so that everything doesn't feel too confusing as I'm laying it down. I made sure to keep with the rule with Mod Podge that you put over and under, so I've put Mod Podge under everything and then over to seal it. Then I moved on to my gesso again and put it around the paper edges with my fingers, just smearing it in, making it a little bit more opaque where the edges met and then kind of smearing it in to the pages a bit more transparently as I went along so that it would bring the whole piece together. Obviously I used a lot of different designs and I wanted to mellow everything down, kind of push it to the back a little bit while still maintaining the integrity of some of the images. I really like the texture of this particular Winsor & Newton white gesso. It's really creamy and doesn't have a lot of grit to it, although it does have some tooth to hold things on. It does just feel like a really nice texture. I'm quite pleased with it. I took some time to just cut off the edges of the paper with an X-Acto knife that were sticking out from my canvas. I've used canvas board today and I just wanted to get it all cleaned up before I moved on to the next step and get it dried off with my Ranger heat tool. So I've moved on to adding some mustard seed distress paint to my Reeves modeling paste and then just mixed it up with a palette knife and grabbed my Harlequin stencil from the Tim Holtz collection and began to just spread little thicknesses of it through the stencil onto the canvas board in various places, making sure that I always go up and down with the design so that it doesn't conflict with itself going in different directions. I always wanted to make things vertical and horizontal. Once I had dried all of the modeling paste properly, then I grabbed my That Special Touch Moroccan mask from Creative Expressions and my trusty set of 15 Neo Color 2 wax pastels. They're actually watercolor crayons. All you have to do is add water to them and they melt. Really amazing. I've used the vermilion, orange, yellow, and ochre colors here. Just adding a bit here and there through my stencil to create a bit of texture and dimension to the piece in various places around the canvas. Every piece of artwork goes through a few ugly stages, at least one, and this is definitely one of those phases of this project where it really doesn't look that exciting, but I have to push through this part to be able to see what I do enjoy. So next I pulled out some distress inks, gave everything a quick heat, and then got started in on putting a bit of stamping down. I'm using the Tim Holtz Papillon rubber stamp set, not really sure how to say that. And I'm using the Ranger Jet Black Archival Ink. It's great because it's oil-based. It'll be permanent when it goes on and there's nothing that I can do with my Distress Inks next that will move it from where it is. Using my Do Crafts Paper Mania acrylic block, I adhered the stamp to the block and then 
tapped on the archival ink and just placed it on and as you'll notice that because I had that dimension on the piece it really didn't give a clear picture but I wasn't really going for a clear stamp I was looking for things to have texture so that has added some extra texture after giving everything a good heat again I moved on to my distressings starting with my lightest color first just to make sure I didn't contaminate my ink pad in any way and that color was the squeezed lemonade and then I moved on to ripe persimmon, picked raspberry, seedless preserves, and peacock blue. I particularly like the peacock blue color and the ripe persimmon, which is really nice. Because distress inks are transparent watercolor, you can really see that come through when you start to layer colors. And as is the case with the peacock blue in the top left-hand corner, you can see that when I went over the mustard seed, paint that was below it, it actually reacted and created a bit of a green color, which is a nice effect, I think. Using a fine mist spray bottle, I filled it with water and then just sprayed some water on to different sections with a bit of a mist and then used my paper towel to pat those sections dry. And because Distress Ink actually reacts with water, it just pulls up some of the color and creates a bit of a lighter effect to certain areas which is nice so I did that a few times so I was happy with it and then went in with more from that Tim Holtz Papillion rubber stamp set and the Ranger Jet Black archival ink and added a few of the butterflies in you can see that I'm stamping just some of them at different places and I'm also using my paper towel at times to stamp first which means I'm getting a second generation stamp is what they call it and it just means that it's a lighter version of what it would be if it was done deeply and that way I can add again more dimension to my piece where some are more in focus than others. I moved on to my Sizzix Big Shot die cutting machine which I absolutely love and used an old music book that I found at a charity shop, pulled out a few pages and used my wordplay Sizzix Biggs alteration die to grab some letters, put it through there, and out came some letters. It is the most amazing way to cut ever. And so I've pulled out a selection of letters that I want to use. I couldn't decide between my E's. Some of them didn't come out as well as others, so I was choosing between the design on them to pick my favorite. And I was just creating a sentiment for the front of my piece which you'll see in a second here so you can see that it's welcome home which I thought was particularly appropriate for my friends in their first ever home that they've purchased I wanted to add some color to my letters that I had cut out with the die cutting machine so I picked some distress ink colors that matched what I previously had been using, which was picked raspberry and ripe persimmon. And there I'm using the picked raspberry along the top of that first word and the bottom of the second word. And I'm using my Ranger blending tool with the foam attachment to just pounce on the color starting on the edges of those letters and working my way in. I've got a dedicated foam for each color, which I think saves me having to wash them up each time. Once I had finished adding the color, I put a little bit of distress stain onto my craft mat, which is from Ranger, and then sprayed a bit of water on there to make it even thinner, and then just swiped my letters through it to add a bit of a golden sheen to the letters. And then just used my heat tool to dry everything before moving on with my project. I decided I wanted to tie in the tarnish brass stain color that I'd added to the letters and so I used my tarnish brass distress paint of the same color and just added little splotches of color and then used a baby wipe and paper towel to spread it around until it was a bit of a transparent layer in various places along the whole canvas and then used distress inks to touch up and brighten up colors where the distress paint had kind of knocked back some of the brightness and vibrancy. I think it's important to note that while everything may feel a bit of 
a random mix of colors. I've actually chosen very specific colors and I've stuck through them throughout the project. So no matter what I used, I was always grabbing for the same color set so that everything would be tied together. When I put my welcome home lettering onto the canvas, I felt that it needed something to make it stand out a little bit. So I used my Scarlet Lime black pen from Christy Tomlinson. She's a great artist who has really inspired me to loosen up a bit and try new things. I've used the pen to outline in a very sketchy feel across the outside of all of the letters and the insides and then used a clear ruler to just line up all of my letters where I wanted my first wording to be. I've pulled out my Mod Podge again, it's that matte Mod Podge, and I'm using a watered down brush to ensure that I'm not putting lots of gloopy glue onto my canvas, but it's just a very light amount because let's remember that the Distress inks are watercolor, so they're going to react to any major amount of liquid going on, and I didn't really want to disturb the Distress inks around the actual letters and simply place them right where they were. So I applied the glue away from the canvas and then placed it on afterwards. Next, I lined up my next word messed around with it a bit to try and work out exactly how I wanted to line it up. And in the end, I chose to bring them up a bit and so they would be centered and just continued to glue until I'd finished that entire phrase. This project was a little bit out of my comfort zone. I do like the color, but I'm not particularly used to using this style. And so it really pushed me and I did it specifically because my friend is very much so into bright vibrant colors so it was really a gift for them and so I pushed myself and tried something new. I'm using my Dark Naples Ochre Faber-Castell Pit Artist Pen here to add a bit of a yellow glow to the edges of my letters and there's just a little window of time where you can smear them with your finger before they dry and then they will dry permanently. So I went ahead, did that, and then just dried it to ensure that everything was not gonna move anywhere. I then went in with Distress Inks using Peacock Blue Ripe Persimmon and one additional color, which was Vintage Photo, to frame the edges of my canvas. Well, that finishes up this project. I like how vibrant it is, and I hope that my friend really enjoys it. As promised, if you're interested in any of the products I use today or have any questions or want to learn more, then head over to my website. This print is available in my shop where you can get it as a print, phone case, greeting cards, or even a throw pillow. If you enjoyed this video, please let YouTube know by giving it a thumbs up. Thanks so much for joining me. I look forward to seeing you again soon.